Hey everyone, today's video is a first look at On One Photo Raw 2022.5. We'll cover a few major features that it comes with, pricing, and some simple comparisons to Luminar Neo, since that's sort of my basis for my first impressions. So first off, here we are in On One's catalog, and it reminds me a lot of how Lightroom's catalog is structured. Currently, I'm in the My Catalog section where I can add my own catalogs, import my own photos. It's got albums and smart albums, and you can easily browse your hard drives locally. Now, if we look at the bottom here, we have various options in terms of viewing the catalog, so I can switch it to uh, this mode here. Or I could pull up the film strip view and cycle through my photos this way, or we can have a gallery view. I also like the fact that we can rate our pictures and later filter them. And that's something that's lacking in Neo as well. So for the most part, it's very flexible with a lot of options. You can easily browse your folders on your computer and you'll be able to organize your photos fairly easily. Now to switch over to the edit section, we're going to simply highlight this photo and you can either double click the photo or head over here to edit and you're going to be brought into the edit section. On the very left, you'll see your tools here as well as some built-in presets. And as you can see, there's quite a bit to choose from, from black and white to cinema to color graded looks, instant film. There's quite a few. And let's say I click on cinema. You're going to have all these different presets that come up. You can cycle through them for specific looks that you want, and you can always make adjustments afterwards. I'm going to close the presets by going down to the bottom icon here to close the panel so that we get a full workspace. So as I mentioned, we have our very basic and common tools here. You have your crop tool, your transform tool. I like that there's a text tool as well. You know, I'm a content creator and I make thumbnails. It'll be interesting to see if I can create my thumbnails in on one photo. We have our local adjustments, faces for portrait AI, which they have. We'll take a look at that in a second. You've got masking options. We also have refinement tools for brush refinements, retouch tools like the healing brush, clone and stamp tool, liquify to push or warp your image, and then your view tool, which is basically just to zoom in and out. And whichever tool you decide to use, that's how I'm going to use retouch. You see at the top here, we have all the various options for this specific tool. Now, if I open up the right panel here, this is where we have the rest of our tools. So at the top, we have our navigation. We can zoom in 100%, 50%, 25%, or we can use control minus or plus to zoom in and out. We have our histogram here and our levels, information on the file that we're using. To the right, we have our history. Now just below, we have our layers and currently I only have one layer open. So if I click on the plus button here, I can add a layer here, like another image if I wanted to. And you have your basic functions like duplicate the layer, add a color fill layer, and you have your blending modes, very typical layer options. Underneath the layers, we're going to have some more features. So develop is your basic controls like tone and color. This is where you would set your exposures, tweak the colors, contrast, highlights. One of the things I noticed about On One right away was the camera profiles. When you shoot raw, each program has a standard profile like the one that's on now. Now, if I click on this, it's going to give me a drop down for different options. It'll adopt the camera's profiles. But the one thing I really liked is that it comes with a linear raw profile. With Luminar Neo, there isn't a linear raw option. As you see here on the image with this profile, this is how it looks when it's raw. And then I can do my adjustments. Now, with that being said, I find that the On One standard profile is very close to what I see in camera on my Sony A7C. So it's a good place to start. So as we look at the options here, you can increase your exposure if I wanted to, contrast, I can bring my highlights down, midtones, shadows. It's got all the standard options. If I scroll at the bottom, you see we have our color options. 
and we also have noise and sharpening. We'll look at No Noise AI. It's one of the features that it comes with. We'll look at that in a few minutes. Then you also have lens correction. Just underneath lens correction, we have our transform tools as well. Next, we're gonna take a look at effects. If you click on add filter under effects, you're gonna see some various options here. Things like film grain, glow, HDR look, LUTs, sun flare, skin retouching. There's quite a few effects that you can apply. So for example, let's click on LUTs. Really just check out all these various LUTs here. I like this classic one. Comfort looks good. Definitely lots of flexibility with the effects. So on the right, we have sky, and this is for sky replacement. We'll take a look at that in a second. I wanna show you on one's version of Portrait AI. Now by default, it already applies some settings here. So I'm gonna open this up here and you're gonna see it applies like a 50% retouching. I'm gonna zoom in here. If we do a before and after, you see this is the unprocessed photo and with the default portrait AI settings you see it really does a pretty decent job. If I were to slide this all the way up it's just going to do like an overall touch up. Now you see that's way too much and it looks very plasticky but you can always tweak the settings here and of course I wouldn't use 100% of that. But for a default setting it works fairly well and it works fairly easily. Next, let's check out the sky replacement. So we're gonna click on sky here. And right underneath, you're gonna see that it already created a mask. So if I click on view, it's gonna show you the mask that it's applying, right? So let's go ahead and apply a sky. And just below, you're gonna see various options here. We have night, storm, cloud, sunset. If we click on more, we have a few more options here as well. So let's just try the clouds right here let's choose I don't know something like this and the first thing I notice with their sky replacement especially between the trees here it does a really good job of separating the background and in between the trees here compared to something like Luminar Neo where their sky replacement is good as well but I find the selection around the edges and in between the trees to be problem areas now, even for air show photos, these are really old photos I took a long time ago. If I apply one of these skies, you see that even along the edges, it does a really decent job separating the object from the background. So in terms of accuracy for sky replacement, it works fairly well. One of the features that really impressed me was resize AI. So I have this JPEG image of April here. And if we look at the information, this was exported at 2000 by 3000 pixels. And as I zoom in here, especially in the eyes, I hope you can see this, we're starting to lose detail. Now it's a good quality JPEG, but it's been compressed. And you know, when you compress a photo, it's gonna lose some detail. And you can also see it around, you know, the nose here, but things start to get very pixelated when we zoom in. So what we can do is if I wanted to upscale this, we can go to the right here and click on resize AI. So on the right here, you see the size of the photo. What I'm gonna do is double the photo size. So we'll make this 4,000, this will turn into 6,000, and then it'll give you a preview of the details. So you can see now how much detail there is now in the eyes. But for now, I'm gonna click done, and then we're gonna save this resized version. Now you see it's starting to export it and it also exports it as a PSD file. So if you own Photoshop, you can open this in Photoshop or even Affinity Photo. Here we have the resized photo and I'm gonna zoom in like we did before. And you see here how much more clear those eyes are. If I zoom in close to the eyes, you see how much more detail we have. And it does a pretty decent job. You have to have a pretty decent JPEG or PNG file to start with. So earlier I mentioned no noise AI. We're going to take a look at that now. If we scroll down here in our develop section and we open up noise and sharpening, you're going to see no noise AI. Now I did apply this already, so I'm just going to reset it. There we go. From this view, you see it looks 
it looks fine. You know, not a lot of issues, but if we zoom in closer here, you start to see the noise. Now for me, this is not a big deal, but if I wanted to be very particular and get rid of this noise, uh, I can use no noise AI here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. If I slide the slider, let's say to about 34, you see it's already starting to take away some of that noise. If I bring some of the details up to preserve the details. Maybe let's try this at 50. As I back off a little bit here, you see that's looking pretty decent. I'm going to zoom in here. And if I were to do a before and after, you see how much noise it's getting rid of. So again, it works fairly well for this. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is the HDR capabilities. With On One Photo, it's already included. So if I take these photos, for example, and on the right, we see HDR. Click on that. And then it'll give us some controls to do HDR. Now I'll leave it at its default settings, save it, let it do its thing. And then we have our HDR image here. Now I'm not going to get into it now, but we also have options for panoramics and focus here. So I guess you could do focus stacking, which is great. In terms of pricing right now, there's a summer sale for practically almost 50% off. It's 67, 63 Canadian. Regular price is about $135 Canadian. So it's a great time to buy it right now. The sale ends July 29th. Now this price is for the standalone on one photo raw. There's also an option for a yearly subscription. Ultimately for the price it's currently at, I think on one photo raw offers a lot of value a lot of features and options. Most importantly, it's a complete program. So what did you think about the tour of On One Photo Raw? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and impressions and any tutorial requests, please leave them in the comments as well. In the meantime, my friends, until the next video, I'll see you when I see you.